Coming up, language and culture. Why Native students need it now more than ever. Their minds are such sponges at this age, they need to absorb as much as they can. Also, the voice of change. Along the way, we have come to realize that we need to unlearn some things before we can begin to learn again. Alaska Native educators gather to look at how the Western school system has failed Native children. Be true to yourself. You know, we're going to have these tough conversations. Just ahead, how education can be used as medicine. Alaska, where there are old triumphs, but also new frontiers. With challenges as great as the state itself, but a belief the best is yet to come. Bringing you the faces, the places, and the spirit of the last frontier. This is Frontiers with Rhonda McBride. Welcome to Frontiers. From Barrow to Bethel to Kotzebue and Nome, a call to reinvent education for Alaska Native children. We'll have highlights from the Inuit Education Conference in Anchorage this week, but first, we'd like to introduce you to someone who attended this gathering. Heidi Aswak is not a Nupiak. She married into the culture, but she is passionate about helping those who speak the language and teach it. We met up with her and her family on a recent trip to Barrow, soon to be named Ukeavik. Just a few miles outside of town, you feel like you've experienced infinity. But the Aswak family knows exactly where they're going. Heidi and Jonas and their son Mark are here to check their nets for whitefish. Oh, I should have brought this double. The net is strung between two holes in the ice, which had frozen overnight. We've got um, nanoks, which are polar bears. Along the bluffs nearby, there are also fox dens. They'll come up to you as well. Life here at the top of the world forces you to be prepared. I had caught a polar bear, and we sent them out to get tanned, and Heidi had sewn them up for me, and they're really warm. It was one of the first polar bear I caught. Heidi sews polar bear pants and parkas. Not bad for someone who was born in New York of Irish and German descent. Not the best day. Heidi Asok has not only adapted to life here, but embraced the culture. This one shows a person with a dog sled team. Heidi manages Barrow's bilingual preschool. This is a whaling scene. Umea with the people, the crew members. Everything here is designed to bring the Inupiat culture home the building blocks of success. This is a caribou and this is a moose. So tutu, tutuvok. Heidi hopes someday to be a fluent speaker of Anupiak, just like her lead teacher, Naomi Aswak. A lot of the elders around the community have been voicing, we need young teachers. And I was like, okay, I'm stepping up. Until then, she plays a supporting role for the staff. <laughs> Naomi is a student at the Ilisavik College, where she works on a degree in early childhood development. There's even one high school intern. Hang on. Kayuk Tuk Tuk. What's he doing? He's paddling the boat. He's paddling a boat. To teach Inupiaq, Jimmy Tuckfield has had to learn more about his language, which he loves to share. When I was clocking out, one of the kids said, I love you, teacher. That made me like super happy. And then I heard another student and then another. And that like just made my day. What's my favorite word? Heidi's love affair with Anupiak began with a single word. Kupak. Fancy trim on jacket. An elder gave her the name. And he goes, you're always kupaking. You're such a seamstress. And it, that meant a lot to me that he recognized what I do. So kupak to me is so much more than a word or a name. It's in my heart. This is the preschool's cleanup song, one that children have begun to sing at home. A reminder that children are teachers too, something Heidi learned when her daughter was a student here. She came home and said, And I, what? 
Imoksamik. I don't know what you're saying. Imoksamik. And so I called my mother-in-law. You got to listen to what she's saying. I don't know what she's saying. Her daughter was asking for milk. And at that point, no, no, Heidi realized she could help pass on the language to the next generation. I know that anybody can learn when they set their heart to it. It, it takes a lot of practice. As an Akka, or grandmother, Eunice Asuk is a natural teacher. I'm going out. Eunice believes her granddaughter, Tatiana, has the potential to become fluent. She knows words. If she could make sentences and learn how to speak, that would be so good. The sounds of the language are second nature to her. So how does Tatiana feel when she speaks Inupiaq? Happy. The lesson for the Asoks, it's always worth it to try. Like words. Getting some really, really big ones lately. The number of fish add up over time. Some people still do that at their home, still talking in the and that's really awesome. <laughs> Jonas is not fluent, but he tries. <laughs> Whenever he wants me to um, get something, he always says it in the back. Because look, you could see the bottom. Mark looks for fish underneath the ice. It's like a blue color down there, huh? The world is still a place of wonder. You could be out here forever. There's no sense of time. The hope, the language of the land, will always be here too. The children who got their start at the bilingual preschool seem to do well academically, including Tatiana. Well, up next, the first gathering of its kind in Alaska. The voice of change, why a group of Alaska Native educators say language and culture could be a solution for many problems children face today. The Red Robin Department of Deliciousness is famous for its dedication to barbecue. This is where the Whiskey River Barbecue Burger was born. The combination of the barbecue sauce and the crispy onion straws makes it one of our most craveable burgers, which is why we've put up these red ropes. And the electric fence. And the plexiglass wall. Okay, who wants to see the pickle room? Nobody makes gourmet burgers like we do. Uniquely created to be insanely delicious. Red Robin. Yum. At Chugach Electric, our job is to keep your power on 24-7. It starts with properly maintaining utility easements. Trees contacting power lines are one of the leading causes of power outages, especially in foul weather. In addition to reducing the overall number of outages each year, properly maintaining safe access reduces the length of time of each outage and makes the job safer for our linemen. That makes your home and the space around it safer. Hi, this is Ted Sadler. Everybody seems to sell mattresses. Have you noticed that? Well, I say my mattresses are just a little bit better for one reason. I spend all my time, and so does my staff, trying to make it better so that you'll be happy. We think that mattresses are very, very important, and we'd like you to take the comfort test. Test our mattresses for comfort. Test our mattresses for price. You'll buy at Mattress Ranch. Need more bucks at the Mattress Ranch. This girl has a secret, and everyone we got a kidnapping. wants to know what it is. I did not see that coming. New NCIS Los Angeles, then. When an Islamic extremist commits an atrocity, every Muslim is implicated. Can the Secretary of State defend one of her own? You know what silence looks like? It looks like support. You're the, uh, the hottest from the news. We need to take a stand. Catch a new Madam Secretary after a new NCIS Los Angeles, CBS Tonight. Inuit, a word to describe the indigenous peoples who make their home in Alaska, Canada, and Greenland and belong to the same language family. In Alaska, we have Inupiat, the Yupik and Siberian Yupik, as well as Chupik cultures. This week, the Inuit Circumpolar Council of Alaska held a gathering in Anchorage, the first of its kind, to put their own stamp on education. 
The collective voice of change. Alaska Native educators say it's been a long time in coming. Along the way, we have come to realize that we need to unlearn some things before we can begin to learn again. I'm talking about colonialization and the effect it's had on our people. Good evening, Hotel Captain Cook. The decor of one of Anchorage's favorite hotels evokes the age of exploration and the history of Captain James Cook, whose ships were agents of change for the world and the cultures they encountered. They mapped the planet, gave the places they traveled to new names, along with birds and other wildlife. We're all uh, the, the beneficiaries of the Captain Cook legacy. Graham Smith has been at the forefront of Maori education reform in New Zealand. At some time we have to say uh, that it's not working. The emperor has no clothes here that our kids are still lost. He says the first step to recognize you've been colonized. It's a false consciousness, it's a false belief. So when, you know, when I was a young person, my father, when he came back from the war, said, you kids, you shouldn't learn Maori language, it's a waste of time. The way of the world is commerce and you need English. In schools across Alaska, Native children were punished for speaking their language. The definition of success was how well they could assimilate into the Western world. Cecilia Martz, a retired Native college professor, says it's important to shine a light on the past, to fully appreciate the beauty and power of Alaska Native culture before colonization. <laughs> Martz has taught college courses on just one word, the Chuyak, the way of the human being. She says she'll never forget an elder's reaction to that word and all that it means. Which means, I'd forgotten about that. And it just brought, brought it home to me so much that it, you know, it brought tears in her eyes. The loss of culture was replaced by a new identity and new names. They had to accept what was given to us at baptism. A priest gave Lottie Jones the name Lidwina. Her family called her Ayoprin. I have two Inupiaq names. This is the one I'm mostly called. Uh, Say it for me. Kutuk. Fanny Okpik doesn't know who gave her her English name, likely an outsider to the community. We need to know the truth of what happened here. And until you know the truth, you can't really be an informed Alaskan citizen, nor can you really understand how to make Alaska better. Our kids feel good about themselves when they graduate. But those here believe they're off to a good start with plans to push for reforms that reflect Inuit values and give parents more control. <laughs> Efforts started years ago have begun to bear fruit. More and more children take pride in who they are. And some have grown up and want to be teachers. All of you here have a very big job. How can we keep producing people like us who have so much pride in where we come from? We're dancing, we're singing for people in our language. What we've learned, we're showing it to you guys. <laughs> Olivia Shields and Byron Nikolai are education students at the University of Alaska Anchorage, the voice of tomorrow. Byron Nikolai and his cousin Olivia Shields are from Tuxuk Bay. Nikolai is well known for his dancing and drumming. He posts his songs on his Facebook page, which has more than 30,000 likes. Well, up next, mother and son teamwork. Why Jana and Kayan Harcharek are a force to contend with. Their story behind how Barrow got its new name, Utkeav. Hi, 
Hi, this is Ted Sadler with my son Max here to tell you about the Gold Standard Mattress. Thanks, Ted. The advanced gel technology is the best bed on the market today. Minimizes body heat, minimizes motion transfer, and it keeps you comfortable. Come into Mattress Ranch and check out the AGT today. Get more sleep without count sheep and have another night of bliss. Sleep in style with a big old smile and you know you save some bucks. Save more bucks at the Mattress Ranch. Sicily's is about to make your lunch and dinner decision as easy as pie. Pizza pie, that is. For a limited time, Sicily's is offering two medium, two topping pizzas for only $7.99 each. Sicily's has always delivered great tasting pizza at a great price. And right now, they're cooking up some hot, delicious pizzas and are ready to make a few for you for just $7.99 each. Call 333-8000. That's 333-8000 for Sicily's $7.99 pizza deal. Or save 20% off everything on Sicily's menu by ordering online at Sicily'sPizza.com. This girl has a secret, and everyone we got a kidnapping. wants to know what it is. I did not see that coming. New NCIS Los Angeles, then. When an Islamic extremist commits an atrocity, every Muslim is implicated. Can the Secretary of State defend one of her own? You know what silence looks like? It looks like support. You're the, uh, the hottest from the news. We need to take a stand. Catch a new Madam Secretary after a new NCIS Los Angeles, CBS Tonight. Air travel for Frontiers is provided by Pan Air. When business or recreation takes you anywhere across the state, Pan Air is there. The only family-owned airline serving Alaska. Pan Air, the spirit of Alaska. We're out climbing mountains every weekend. There's just something about being at the top of the mountain, sometimes by yourself or with your family, and it's so beautiful and so serene, and you just feel like striking a yoga pose. You heard two words a lot at this week's Inuit conference, indigenize and decolonize, words that you don't hear a lot in mainstream education. And joining us to talk about this movement, which goes beyond Alaska to Hawaii and New Zealand as well, Jana and Kayan Harcharek, a mother and son team. So Jana, I guess people want to know, what did this conference accomplish? We are so... Um invigorated uh, that's that's the word I've heard in terms of uh, how people left uh, after the two days and and uh, there were some very significant themes that arose as a result of the conversations that took place over the two days and I just want to share those with you very quickly um, language immersion school from birth to adult uh, uh, something that's been done in um, Aotearoa in in New Zealand as well as in in Hawaii and so we want to take that concept and see how we can make it work for us in, as Alaskan Inuit um, here uh, in our state. Growing and developing our own local teachers, administrators, and leaders. And I just want to say something about that very quickly. We haven't been very successful at producing uh, our own as our teachers, and we've talked about growing our own teachers for many, many years. And I believe uh, one of the main reasons that that we haven't been able to do that very well thus far is because we don't teach our own history. We uh, neglect who we are in the classrooms. We have, for all practical purposes, asked our children to leave who they are behind the door when they walk in the classroom. And so many of the things that we talked about over the last couple of days uh, honed in on that. And I believe that once we are at a point in our history where we do teach our own uh, history from our perspective and be inclusive of the heritage of the very children we work with will teaching become an honorable profession. So I have uh, great hope that uh, the things that we've been talking about over the last couple of days will make a huge difference. Another piece was in developing culturally relevant curriculum. Um, when we have um, books that are written uh, by and for urban students, students that could be from anywhere in the world. Children have a really hard time relating to that. They don't have sidewalks, for example. A, a curbs, exactly. <laughs> curbs. Uh -huh. And so that, that was a really, really important piece. I just want to uh, share uh, an example very quickly. We produced a unit called um, It's about the ten-legged uh, ten polar bear. And I was just in um, Nuiqsut, where a third and fourth grade teacher uh, Kara Turk taught, and she was just absolutely amazed. She said, 
she could see the huge difference, a huge difference in comprehension because it was a story that our kids could relate to. It was one of our, one of our legends, based on one of our legends. So this, this piece is huge. Um, creating our own teacher credentialing system. We want to be the ones who define what a teacher should look like and the courses that a teacher should take. Implementing a, a local uh, schooling calendar that's based on the subsistence lifestyle rather than uh, an agrarian calendar from um, August through May. Let's spread school out during the whole school year was, was, was the idea. Um, making appropriate systemic and policy changes. You know, when we talk about um, influencing policy at the state level and at the federal level, there was a lot of, there was a lot of discussion around that and how we need to, to come together and, and identify uh, those places in which policy needs to be changed to, to be more accommodating of, of our issues. Well, one of the things that you heard at that conference is, I would almost say this sort of radical attitude that we're not gonna take it anymore from the state or anybody that tries mm -hmm. to stop us. I mean, has uh, efforts to bring culture and language in schools been suppressed in recent years? Uh, we were guilty of it ourselves in our own district, and we have had local control since 1972. We, we were neglecting the teaching of our own history. And as a district, uh, uh, and I can use our district as, as an example, uh, we were guilty of, of, of it. And uh, we realized as a district uh, some years ago that we had never gone to our people and asked them what is important for your kids in your schools? What is your vision for your school in your community? As a district, we finally took the time to ask. Well, between you and your son, you have quite a team here because he's also uh, head of the school board and also a council member in Utkeavik. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We're gonna practice that in a bit, but why is it that, that you feel that, that You've got this passion to carry on some of your mother's work. Well, it, it's being Inupiat, and it's who we are as a people. And the important part is our language. Language without our language, we can't um, we we can't explain or live uh, um, and articulate our worldview uh, as as good as in in English. Not being a fluent speaker myself. Um, I, I struggle with depression, and many of our uh, rural communities do. Suicide is huge in our state, and I truly believe it has to do with the loss of language and, 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 and that emptiness inside. Um, there's, there's a huge part of us missing, and, 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 and I believe that language is, is that. Well, one of the things, and we have some footage here uh, to show you, this comes from Point Hope. And, and this is about the time that schools started to come into rural communities. What do you see here, Jana? I see um, happy people. I don't know if this was during or if the era to send children off to boarding schools was, was in force yet, uh, but I see what seem to be intact families who seem to be very, very happy. Look at the elders. Uh, in the community, integral part of the community. They were our wisdom bearers. So one of the things that, that I'm really interested to learn, uh, Kayan, is your sort of personal drive to change the name of Barrow. And, and you know, the vote came within a handful of votes. A lot of people question the wisdom of that because the name Barrow is so well known. Sure, it, it is well known, but it's, it's a reclamation of our traditional name. Um, and, and, and it's a step towards decolonization. And I think we need to do so for, for us to perpetuate who we are and where we come from. And, and, and doing so in, in all of our place names is really important. One of the first things that uh, the colonizers did when they came is replace all of our names. Now you were talking about Captain Cook's voyage and you said that he didn't get to Utkayevik. Mm -mm. <laughs> Fortunately. He was stopped by ice at what, what ha was renamed by him as Icy Cape, a place known to us as Kayak Sarovik. And we're actually quite fortunate uh, that they weren't able to get through because um, the lieutenant on the, on the voyage 
had tuberculosis and had they had they had contact with with the Inupiat at the time I cannot even begin to imagine the the uh, ep epidemic that would have ensued so Kayan when does this new name change officially take effect sure on December 1st there'll be an executive order out of uh, Lieutenant Governor Byron Malott's office. Uh, they plan on doing a live stream and uh, we have a celebration and um, even a logo, logo contest occurring in Barrow to help celebrate that. So, okay, this is the time that we get to practice. So help us learn how to say Barrow's new name. You say Ut Kervik. The Ut as in, is in like the Ut in Sut, Ut. Kervik, and the, the what sounds like the K is produced in the way back of the throat, what we call an uvular sound, utkervik, and the G that has the dot above it that has so many people uh, riled up. Um, I like to say it's um, if if you think about uh, coughing up a loogie, that's about the sound that you're going to make. Utkervik. Okay, and quickly, what does it mean? It means um, place where you gather edible roots. What a beautiful thought mm -hmm. with that, that goes with that name. Well, one other thing before we leave here, we want to just mention Edward Itta, who passed on. Uh, he was a whaler, a well-known leader. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how he embodied your culture? He was very, very strong in uh, and very persistent and very... Um, uh, he stuck to his guns. When it came to um, development, in particular offshore development, he was very, very strong in, in ensuring that the uh, Inupiat voice was at the table in any decisions that were being made. And he was very insistent and persistent uh, in communicating the idea that, that um, that we have to be at the table and that things must be done according to our terms. Your terms, same with language. I want to yes. thank both of you for joining us. Well, these issues that we explored on Frontiers are kind of like a tip of an iceberg. They go very, very deep, have a long history, impossible to fully address in a half hour program, definitely worth revisiting in the future. We want to thank you for joining us. And we leave you now with one last look at the Alaska Native Cultural Charter Schools Dance Group. Enjoy. Nice.